Sitting in the park Waiting for you Sitting Oh, hello, everybody. Thought of Swarth Jump Show. I'm here. It is the evening edition. Hey, baby. How y'all is? Come on in. The water is fine. Mmm. It's summertime. Summertime in the city. Boy, I tell you, the last time I've come out here was, mm, ah, I think the last time I was out here was October of last year, 2017. Mm. It was a beautiful day. I remember it was kind of daytime outside. If y'all go to my YouTube channel, you'll see the show that I did out here. It was absolutely beautiful. It, it has been very, very hot lately, 90s degrees, and um, challenging for a brother to be walking around the park. Mm -hmm. So, the city turned on water. Mm. And it's cold. Mm. Tell God thank you. Since I've been here last, they've planted trees in Searsville. Tree there, there's a tree there. There's a whole bunch of trees around here. They have been blessing the park. I want to talk about the abandonment of men to his family and his lady. Blessings to you, Melinda, and some of you who haven't been here since eight months ago. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, wait, I, I don't know. I want Chicago Public Schools. <sighs> men abandon their families for various reasons. And I'm going to tell I'm going to say something to you that may cause you to say, how dare you? Uh, I don't care. Let me tell you something. Men look at you and they have, they got this one thing on their mind or two or three. Let me, let me explain what those are. All right. Number one, a man f uh, check you out from across the room. Y'all might be in church. Y'all might be on a job. You might be in a restaurant. But he's checking you out from across the room and you look nice to him. Why? Because God has put something in the man's eye. Mm -hmm. He allowed the, a man to see you a different way than you would see a man. Yeah, I know. I know there's something else. Men are very physical. Uh, we're very, we're like, uh, mm, we're more like, wow, uh, wow. Uh, that fountain right there. I just, I just drank out of that water fountain. That's a man. You want to know what a woman look like? Uh, uh, take that water, that, that concrete, and break it up. And dig, and then there's a hole up under that water fountain right there. And go way down there to the source of the water. It's called a well. Men are like fountains. We're always sprouting out. And women are like whales. In order to find her, to, to get some to some of the most most precious metals, you got to dig deep in the ground to find it. Mm-hmm. God designed it that way. Blessing to you, David Brock. All right? Men are always sprouting out. That's why he's able to whistle at a woman. That's why he touches her and get an excitement that comes over him. He get a heart on just by the very thought of you because God has created something in him, put in test, pumped him up with testosterone and filled him up with what's called spermatozoa, and he is ready at a moment's notice to pop it. I know, y'all, this is Romance in the Park, and y'all already know, Latoya, Latanya, y'all already know this is how we talk out here, and if you can't take this kind of banter, I suggest you go and get back in the bed, okay? Blessing to you, Tony Williams, this, this ain't going to be nice, okay? So men are always ready to pop, always ready to pop, all right? Unless he's tired, or unless he's already popped, uh, he's fatigued, uh, he, he might have ate too much, even when he ate too much, he's ready to pop. Okay, it don't take much, and women know that. That's why y'all dress the way you do. That's why you talk the way you do. That's why you wink at the eye. That's why you put perfume on. That's why you play certain songs because you know it don't take much for a man. You get him. Mm -hmm. You already know when you left the house. You put on that particular type and style of dress, or the lack thereof. You showed your breast in some kind of way because you know. Why do you think the prostitutes walk the way they do? Why do you think they might be outside in the corner and they sit on uh, the fire hydrant a certain way so that a man can see her behind? Why is it? Because she know how you operate. A pimp know a, a, a prostitute. A prostitute know a pimp. 
Oh, man. Happy Father's Day. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you. Thank you. Okay? They grown folk talk, y'all. Y'all better walk away from this. Walk away because this is this is, this is is too deep for some of y'all church folks. Okay? So, men are ready. They're always ready to pop off. Uh, a woman, you got to dig deep. You got to dig a little deeper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to get down there. You got to find a way to whine. And then you got to die in her. Okay, you gotta always reconfirm to her that you love her. Ah oh, man, you gotta find different ways, uh, tricks and uh, tricks and treats, and you got to um, be uh, find clever words and phrases. I'm trying to tell you, you gotta do it. Uh, that's why the porn industry has found clever ways of getting a woman to watch their stuff because what they do is they write in plots and themes and, and their uh, love stories in, the, in, in a porn movie. Makes no sense to a man. That's why he's always fast forwarding. But a woman never fast forwards. She might rewind, but she ain't fast forwarding. And that's something because of the psychological aspect of it. So men, I'm going to get to my point in a minute. Don't go in the way, y'all. Uh, so a man, he sees this woman. He's attracted to her physically. And then he takes her and brings her, her into his lair. Where is his lair? It might be mentally. Mm -hmm. Some preachers, uh, 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 these Christian men, sometimes they bring him into a spiritual lair. They use these Christian terms, you know, to get the woman to his space. Uh -huh. Nicola, blessings to you. Thank you. Happy Father's Day to me. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, or he find ways, clever ways. Now, a man knows that many women out there are desperate. I walk. Many women out there are extremely desperate. Y'all are desperate. Y'all are so desperate. Men know it. They know it. Mm-hmm. Come on, Melinda. Make love to her mind. They know you're desperate, and they began to use certain terms, uh, and they begin. They they'll they'll even put certain colors. They they will they will set moods whether it's inside in their car or they'll set moods in their apartment. They might even paint the walls certain colors because they know that causes you to act a certain way. I mean, I'm trying to tell y'all who was that pimp, that, that comedian. Um, what's his name? A little short pimp, the funny guy. Okay, he talked about it in one of his stand-up things he talked about how he know he had women over to the house uh and he know what they want so he 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 stashes his house with certain things that make them feel comfortable because he know what they want i said yeah and he a pimp mm -hmm. he know it so there are men out there who have the pimpology down pat mm -hmm. it's all right out here for a pimp okay all right so He's attracted to you physically, and then he began to whine and dine you because he know that is a requirement to keep you. Ah, oh, man. Okay. Now, before we get to the point of abandonment, we got to get to the point of where did he find you? Where did he discover you? Did he discover you in church? Did he discover you on the job? Again, we're repeating this. Did he discover you in a bar? Did he discover you, uh, were you one of the waitresses at Hooters? Okay, where did he find you and how did y'all hook up? Was it on eHarmony? Was it on date.com? Was it on christianmingle.com? All right, where did he find you and then how did this uh, arrangement take place? Because this will determine possibly why he was able to abandon you so quickly. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, Daniels, thank you, dear. Thank you so much. Attack me when you talk about why women give up on, on men, on good men. I know, Joe Hill. I know, brother. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> Not today, but I feel your pain. Uh, is there a difference between the two? Um, a difference between, between what two? We talking about? Yes, Melissa Cat Williams. Cat Williams. That little pimp, little short pimp with the, with the long, with, anyway. Okay, so, this brother... He sees her. He wants her physically. See, there's the problem. There's the problem. Oh, man. Chivalry, y'all think, has died. And in today's man, it appeared that it has died. But it ain't, it ain't dead. Uh, Joe Hill is one of the perfect examples that chivalry. Chivalry ain't dead. It just ain't. It just put on, it has placed, put on a new clothing. It ain't dead. Uh, uh. So, so a man sees you. He wants you physically. He wants to embrace you physically. He wants to kiss you. He wants to hold you, or he wants to have sex. Now, 
how to explain these things number one if a man wants to hold your hand it may not be all physical because men um, many men aren't as mushy as you are to him you see women like these subtle things of walking down the street and showing public affection a lot of men don't like public affection they don't okay but he will only he will sh uh, actually compromise with the public affection if he knows that he gonna get some nooky nooky. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, Natasha, I'm back in the park walking around here at night. Yeah, uh, 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 pray for me. Keisha, you said you keep freezing? I keep freezing? Well, I don't know. Y'all, am I freezing? Because Keisha's uh, phone is freezing and she got Boost Mobile. I don't know. Uh, is it that women are desperate or are we longing? Melinda, that's a good question. Uh, many women today, I believe, are longing, which turns into desperation. Hear me. I think the longing starts first, and then it turns into desperation. <laughs> Natasha, you behave. Uh, is there a difference between desperate and longing? Uh -huh, I just said it. She longs for a man because her, her, maybe her flower of time might be passing, number one. Number two. She's longing for a man uh, because the other man is gone. He either left her, he, he might have died, or he might have come out of the closet. <laughs> okay, something didn't happen. So she's longing for a good man, and she thinks she sees him on stage. He might be the praise and worship leader. He might be the piano player. He might be the pastor. He might be the boss. The super, the, the, he might be the supervisor. He might be a politician. Or he might be the bus boy at the, at the um, I don't know, at the restaurant okay but she sees this man and there's something about his character that she's attracted to but she's longing for a relationship with anybody or just with him so she longs and the longer she longs for him it turns into desperation because i believe desperation takes action longing don't necessarily take action desperation though i believe takes action does this make any sense yeah yeah, uh, Melinda, Melinda says I'm freezing too. Okay, and you have AT and T. Yeah, I don't know. There's something going on out here. I usually don't freeze out here, but maybe because it's 95 degrees and, and Verizon is a good. They're good people. <laughs> yeah, they're good people. Oh, uh, Keisha said you got Sprint. Oh no, and you in Chicago? Sprint is the most worst, the most worst service in Chicago history. <laughs> You got U.S. Cellular too? You, you, your kids got U.S. Cellular? All right, let me stop. Uh, okay, yeah, come out the closet. Okay, so, so women are desperate. Now, he knows it because how she is eyeing him in public. Mm hmm Yep, yeah, she is eyeing him in public. Uh, um... I think women think the men are kind of dumb and silly or stupid, and we are all three, many of us. <laughs> Okay, but uh, she's getting his attention without approaching him. Now, today's woman will approach you. Trust me on this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Natasha, today's women will approach men, unlike it used to be before when y'all played hard to get. No more of that. Women do not play hard to get today. I'm sorry. I'm not talking exclusively. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about all women. I'm talking about many women today, they don't play hard to get. They just don't. Uh, can it just be companionship she wants? Yes, agape. That's good. That's a good question. Ah, oh, man. That's a good one. Can she just want companionship? You see? How do you define companionship? Because your sister, not, not your blood sister, agape, but your sister, the sisterhood, companionship means one thing to her, but means another thing to you. Oh, man. So companionship could mean fill this bed up because ain't no man in that bed and I just want companionship because I am lonely. See, and I think a lot of women, they think past uh, that bridge. They are alone, so they want companionship just to fill a cold spot, not realizing that there are other drama issues that come with filling that void. 
And she may not look at that. You see, women fall in love and they want to get married, but they think about the wedding night, the wedding day, the wedding process, uh, the process of getting the dress and the bridesmaids and the rings and all of this stuff and the cake. And she, she's uh, overthrown, over, overtaken with the process of getting married, but the man ain't thinking about none of that. He don't want any of that, actually. He actually would rather go to the dresses of the peace. Yeah, he want to find his his brother, his friend Bojangles, who just happened to have an elder's license, and he says, "Listen, we'll do it in your basement. Let's just get this over with, dude." He thinking about his life. He thinking about his future. He thinking about life insurance and health and 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 rearing children, and all that stuff. But she is focused on that one night of ecstasy. That is the wedding, or one day of ecstasy. That's the wedding. Mm -hmm. And then that one night, which is, of course, if y'all haven't been doing it prior to that, she's thinking about that night, the honeymoon night. And then what happens after that? You ask her, so what did, have you been thinking about anything? Any future plans with your husband? Well, yeah, she'll come up with some light little things. But he, he terrified. <laughs> he terrified. So because in his terror, it causes him to think, should I do this? If he's that terrified of marriage, then it is easier for him to abandon you. Oh, man, I know. But men know what they want versus what they need. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm trying to tell you. A lot of men do know what they want, but they can't tell you what they want because they're afraid to upset you or disappoint you. It could be A, B, or B, A. All right? But he, he do not want to upset you. Do you not know that many men will lie to you uh, because he don't want to, he's actually trying to protect your heart? When, we, when I say that, a lot of times women get so upset with that comment. They say, that makes no sense. It makes no sense to you because you're a woman. And you say, no, nah, he lying because he's trying to get out of a situation. What well, duh. Of course he's trying to get out of a situation. That's why people lie. But he lie because he's trying to protect your heart. He don't want to break your heart even though he is caught with his pants down. Uh, look, at, look at your president, prior president, um, uh, what number is he? 41? 42? I can't keep up with these people. I think he's 40, 41. Anyway, Clinton. Bill Clinton. Notice what he did. He started messing around with the intern. He was messing around with women prior to that. As a matter of fact, I believe he has a child out of wedlock, okay, when he was governor of uh, Arkansas. I believe he has one, okay? We say, nope, not me. But they're done, done that. I know, I know, Melinda. Okay, and then he started messing with these other women, and then he became president, and then he's, hey, Lena, and then he started messing with this intern. Okay, we know Clinton was a freak, all right? I don't know if he's older now. Maybe he's not a freak anymore. He just, he just, he just a, a biscuit right now. And he just figured, well, you know what, I'm, I'm done. I've retired from pimpology, okay? But he messed with that girl, and there is, uh, she kept the dress, because women always hold on to the evidence. Oh, man. Where my water at? I gotta drink this. Women always, brothers, let me help you. I'm about to protect you. Women always hold on to evidence because she know one day she may need to use it. Mm -hmm. Learn the hard way. It was more after that you still in my thunder. <laughs> yep. A black child. A copy. That's right. Clinton. Okay. So notice what the interviewer asked Bill Clinton last week. Okay. Lena, that is true. Lena said that's not true. Women always hold on to evidence. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you. Ask me how I know. Y'all always hold on. See, there's Agape says, yes, we do. Yes, you do. And you will hold on to it any special kind of way. I'll get to that in a minute. Clinton uh, abandoned, he, he, uh, he abused his power as president of the United States. And then he did this thing with Monica Lewinsky, and then what did he do? He lied. Why did he lie? He banged on the table and says, I did not have sex with, with sexual relationship with that woman. Okay? Why did he lie? He lied because he wanted to try and get out of this. He knew that he abused his power. He didn't want to get in trouble. And he was trying to protect the hearts of America as well as his wife. I'm trying, that's what men do that. 
okay? Now, recently, when they asked him the question, did you apologize to Monica Winston? He said, no, I apologize to the world. Why do I need to apologize to her? Mm. Why was he in this thing? You Do you think that he would have left uh, Hillary Clinton and decided he wanted Monica Lewinsky, he would have decided to just walk away from that relationship and marry this girl and have an, ever, uh, uh, an everlasting life with this girl? That would have never happened. Why? He was in that for sex. Mm. Um, uh, we got our favorite dress clean, sir. Natasha, see? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to tell you. Uh, yep. I got evidence right now. Just in case. See? I got <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Melinda says, how do I know? I, I, can't, I can't tell you. Let me tell you something. I know some brothers. I hope they ain't not walking behind me. Them brothers, I hope they ain't walking behind me. Because I know these brothers. So let me explain what. Let me tell, let me tell you something. I might get in trouble with the, with the brother uh, initiative. I'm a part of the brother initiative of America. And sometimes I tell some stuff in this park that gets me in trouble. Women always keep evidence. I got some brothers who would tell you that he was having sex with her, he was penetrating her, and he tried to pull out. All right. Okay. I got to be honest with y'all. I got to be honest with y'all. See, because y'all think I was honest last year in my romance in the park series? Oh, I'm going to be even more honest this year. I'm going to be even more honest because this is helping somebody. I'm telling you, I walk up, I bump into people on the street all the time, and they always tell me, Walter, thank you for that. Thank you for that. They say, I will never say it publicly the way you say it, but I, I watch your show in private and secret in the basement because you be telling the truth, and you put yourself out there like that to help people, and you help me. So I'm going to tell you all this. I remember, uh, who? Ooh, wee, this, this is tough. <laughs> this is a tough one, Melinda. It's a tough one. So here I am. A brother was telling me something about his sexual escapade, and I was remembering what happened to me in my sexual escapade, and the same thing happened, and we came to the conclusion that women like to keep evidence. Ooh, wee. He says he was inside this woman, and he was getting ready to come, and he tried to pull out and she took her legs and held him and squeezed him tight took her hands and pushed him inside of her so that he couldn't pull out what was she trying to do number one she was trying to get pregnant why was she trying to get pregnant she was trying to get pregnant because she felt that that was the way to keep him. That was a way to entrap him. That was proof that there was something going on. Number four or three, I don't know who you are, that is DNA. Oh, man. There are stories where women actually uh, had men to copulate either in her or on the bed. And then, uh, or sometimes she would have him to put on a... a um, a condom and then he would copulate in the condom and then she would while he's asleep she would take the condom and hide it in that and stash it somewhere and then she would save that sperm mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell y'all women always keep evidence now that is the that is that that might be the hot far right Okay, I'm not saying I'm not saying all women will go to that extent, but I'm using that ex extent example to prove to you that women do. They will keep voicemails. Hi, hey, uh, baby, this is uh, uh, Tony. You doing all right? Good. I'm just checking on you, babe. All right, I love you. Bye. Boom. She will keep that voicemail. She will make a copy of it, put it in the cloud. Apple, iCloud or something, okay? She'd make copies of it, put it on cassette tape, a, a VHS, Betamax, a CD, and a, a MP3, MP4, VH1, and BET. <laughs> she, would, she would keep that voicemail because she know one day I may need to re re replay this to him and accusers and whomever else I need to do it. Why do you think Monica Lewinsky kept that dress in the Oval Office? 
Why? Ooh, -wee. I'm trying to tell you, women keep evidence. Brothers, I'm trying to tell you, if you're going, if you're going to tap, you need to erase all your DNA before you go in there. Cut your finger uh, prints off. That's the only way you won't get caught. <laughs> Did I say that? I said it. Okay, I said it just to, just to say. Uh, there's a difference between uh, longing and then being desperate and being foolish, okay? I can't to this day understand why a woman would try so hard to get a man, to keep a man, knowing that this man it ain't right for her. I can't understand that. Knowing one day that he is going to abandon her. Knowing that he's leading up to the abandonment because he he's trying to run away from her. He he don't talk to her for after a while for a few days, a few weeks, okay? He he don't he don't he don't remember those uh, important moments anymore. Those per important days well he may not re he may remember them, but he don't respond to them. And he's doing all these things to tell you, I really don't like you no more. And she still chases him. Melinda, you know what that is? That's desperation. Mm -hmm. Text messages, yep, of an appropriate language. Come on, Agape. Text messages, inbox messages. Uh, she might, y'all might be FaceTiming, which don't record the message, but FaceTiming, and then you take a snapshot of the, of the phone, a screenshot. And to prove to everybody, he was talking to me. Here's the date stamp right here. All kind of stuff. Let me tell you, women are cunning. They're clever. And the Bible told us to beware of those because they could get to... They, Proverbs chapter 6 talks about how this woman... Now, this was an adulterous woman. She wasn't single, so... But this woman could uh, bring a man to a piece of bread. That woman. He says, beware of the... The, the winking eye woman, the woman that bats her eye at you from afar, watch her. She ain't no good. Ooh, we, okay? Uh, so, uh, men, why do they abandon you? Number one, they really only wanted you for sex. That's it. He really didn't want anything else. He put up with the, the, the cute words of, I, I love you. Baby, you're the best thing to happen to me. Baby, I like when we walk here and I like when we do this stuff. He gets, he, he'll, he'll use all those so that he can get you to the bed. Now, once he gets you to the bed, some men only want that one night of pleasure. And if that one night of pleasure ain't good, does not meet up to his fantasy level, he done. He tasted it and he out of there. He don't want them. He don't want them all. So then he turned off that cute talk. No more open to public affection. No more phone calls and cute little Marco Polos and and uh, and what's that other thing? Duo. No more house party. Uh, no more uh, what's that other thing? Glide. Okay. And then no more uh, FaceTime. No more inbox calls. Okay. Uh, DMs and all no all that stuff usually stop after he realized he tasted it and I didn't like it the sex wasn't good you might have had body odor you might talk like a little girl you you uh you might be insecure uh you may talk you might be uh 60 years old and you talk like a third grader Okay, you, you you just you don't meet his level. He just he just can't take it no more. So he tried to find ways of getting rid of you. And the best way usually the men think, because we we kind of dumb, we think that the best way to get rid of you is to avoid you or to abandon you. You see how long it took me to get to that point? I know y'all. I'm sorry. It took me 28 minutes to get here. But the men think I got a great idea. Why don't I just abandon her? And she'll get the message. Instead of him telling you, you know what? I tried this out. And I don't like it. I think we should go our separate ways. That is the honest way to do it. But men don't do that because they are afraid. Number one, most men know you got DNA evidence. <laughs> I said it. Uh, so, what does, what, so what does that make him... And you not women bashing tonight, are you, uh, Janice Hobson? Janice Hobson, I never women bash. I never men bash. I'm an equal basher opportunist, 
Okay? I'm telling y'all the truth. That's what it is. What does that make him? Well, let me tell you. I just said it as I was reading your comment. I said it a few seconds prior to it. Mm hmm. Yes. Uh, Dimitri Pitt says it makes him a coward, just like it makes that woman a, a desperate woman when she knows this is who he is and she continues to chase after him that makes them both fools now who did I just bash yeah mm -hmm. Agape says I guess I'll stay single forever now let me say let me say something to you women right now I'm getting ready to bash you right now since you're no I'm just kidding I will say this though it's funny Here's the funny thing about the response from women when men are talking about men and the women and men are talking about women. When men talk about the dastardly deeds of men, women say, Amen. Women say, You know you right, Elder Jones, Sir Walter. I tell you, you are a prophet from the high. When I talk negative about men, look at us. Come see a man who's talking about these old dirty men. Mm-hmm. But when I start talk, stepping on women's toes, the women say, he crazy. He don't know nothing about no women. He women bashing. Look at him. Big nose, <laughs> six foot tall, size 13. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, ain't that something? That's how Donald Trump got in office. Y'all, some of y'all are caught into, I always use this word, a vortex. Where that man can do no wrong. And his polls keep climbing because he do wrong and lie. And his polls keep climbing by the very people who voted him in. And they, they got cataracts. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you got to be careful of the tricks and the wiles of the devil because you will say, Amen. Yeah, that man over there ain't no good. And then one of your sisters will do something and the man says, How dare? She's, a, she's acting like a prostitute. And then the womenhood, the sisterhood will go jump on that man because he called one of your sisters... Harlot. Mm. Janice, I know you ain't said all that. I'm using an example. <laughs> Hush your mouth. <laughs> I'm talking about the sisterhood because the sisterhood is broken. The sisterhood is broken. It's obvious that the, the, the brotherhood's been broken for uh, 2,000 years. We know the brotherhood is broken, but the sisterhood is broke in. We don't talk about it, but it is. You say, where is it broken? Well, if I'm married and I'm messing with a, with a young lady, it's obvious that the sisterhood is broken because she know I'm married. And she would rather cheat with me on one of her sisters and hide it. Number two, some of y'all are telling your best friends about your, your sexual escapades with your friend. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You are preparing your best friend for a sexual escapade with your man. She getting ready to mess on, mess with your man. It happens too much. The sisterhood is broken. You got a woman. You got women in the room all together, and they fighting and fussing over what stupid stuff. A lot of times, it has something to do with a man. The sisterhood is broken, and y'all only come together. When the, the the enemy of my enemy is my friend, when you try to entrap a man, that's when y'all come together, and that is African Americans' plight. That's what we do. We'll come together when a white cop come in my neighborhood and shoot a black boy. Now we all want to get in the streets and march, and gangs and everybody calls on the truce, and we come marching against this white cop because the enemy of my enemy is my friend, and that is what's happening. Mm -hmm. We all got to look at the big picture. Yep, men and women. If we don't look at the big picture, uh, Agape, we are going to be like the scripture says, while men were asleep, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. Y'all better wake up. So stop taking sides and saying all men are this or all women are this. Because notice, when I talk, I try not to talk in absolutes. I try my best. And I might mess up here and there because I'm human, but I try my best to say, now some women do this. Some men do this. And one plus one equals two. That's what I'll say.
All right. Now, there are some great women out there who love and decide that they're going to stay single. Some of them decide they're not going to ever marry because in this day and time, more women are deciding not to marry for obvious reasons. Number one, they make more money than men and they don't want to be trying to take, take, take care of some little boy who's going to mess up her credit report and take all her money and, and empty her bank accounts. So she, she'd rather go on the dating scene. She still, she's, now watch this, here's that word longing she's still longing but she ain't gonna marry that dude because she know marrying him could possibly tap into her security so she won't do it so what does she do she just stay on the dating scene that's today that's kind of a shame that that's the way it has to be today it doesn't have to be that way today it's that's the way it is today so she just she just date folks and how do we know Every time you turn around and look on ABC and some of these other stations, notice how these writers are writing in the storyline for especially these black girls. Being Mary Jane. The first episode I saw, a man came over to the house and they was knocking boots. The next episode, another man came over to the house and they was knocking boots. I turned on uh, Scandal, Olivia Pope. The first episode, she knocking boots with the president. The next episode, she knocking boots with an old guy, an old uh, lover. The next episode, she knocking boots with a new lover. I, I turn on How to Get Away with Murder. First episode, she knocking boots with uh, uh, somebody, her, her husband or somebody. Okay. The next episode, she knocking boots with some, one of the students. Okay, or something like that. Okay. What's going on? Even Tyler Perry writes those kind of those kind of uh, scenarios. Why? Because that's reality. That's what's going on right now. Women, African American women, especially, are deciding I'm not going to get married and I'm going to play the role of the man because men have been playing this role for uh, 200 years. Now it's my turn. So I'm going to cheat like men do. I'm going to play that single game like men do. I'm going to be the pimp tress like men do. And I'm going to enjoy it and save my own money and retire. That's what women are doing today. Yes. What can I say about it? I don't know. Don't forget the Han, see, Melinda. Why is it? And watch this. It's the black woman who's writing these roles for her sister. So what is she trying to tell America? Because when white America see these roles coming from black women, they think that that's how most black women are. Mm. Yeah, Janice, what do you say? Not a student, the police officer. Not a student. I'm not understanding what you said. Uh, refreshing my memory on that comment you just made. I'm not sure. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I ain't going. I don't want you to go out there like that, Melinda. So, men see this misconduct from women, and guess what? He said, Oh, you want to play the, the dating scene and the pimp role? Well, I'm going to play it with you because. You like going out with a lot of men, and I want to be one of them. And all I want to do is get some other for JJ. That's all I want. And if that's the agreement you have, then we just going to be F partners. That's it. That's what's happening today in the church and in clubs and in politics uh, and, and in the music industry. Everywhere you go, that's the way it is right now. These bishops that you see in church, they got women on the side who they will never leave their wives for, and the women don't want them to. They just want sex partners. That's all. And they're done. Mm hmm. That's all they want. I put up a post the other day. Did y'all see my post about uh, if, the, if, the, if America decided to legalize polygamy with the church conform? You remember that post I put up? I truly believe in my heart of hearts. Not all the churches, because many of the churches are still stand, stand true to the word of God, but many of those churches would conform over to polygamy. They would because many of the pastors and bishops are already doing it. There are many preachers out there, you may not know who they are, but they have a couple wives already. They have arrangements, you know, that they have with women, and the women know who they, they the women know that, that he got a woman on the side and he got a woman over there in another city. They know this stuff. So they would they would gladly conform to it because they're doing it now. It's like the whole weed situation. They wanted to legalize it because they're already doing it. Uh, the reason I'm I'm team celibacy into marriage, no. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. You saw that post, Melinda? I'm trying to tell y'all 
they are doing it now. So many of you were very honest with you. As a matter of fact, 90% of you who commented on that post said the same thing, that they are already doing it. And men would love it. And it was allowed in the Old Testament, and many people preach from the Old Testament. They teach from the Old Testament, so they love that polygamy thing. It feels good to them. It's a part of uh, uh, Themis sister wife foolery. I went live about this for you. Oh, Veronica, I need to see that live. Mm -hmm. And the wives know. Yes, come on, Pitts. They are already participating. So, yes, they will conform to that. Man, you know how long the uh, the Episcopal Church, the Church of Christ, and some of the other churches, these affirming churches, was waiting on that law to be passed so that uh, two men can marry each other? You know how long they've been waiting on this? So now they can push it in your face. And the church has adopted it. You know? I went to a church in Indianapolis the other day, uh, a couple months ago, to train a choir uh, a group of Baptist choirs and uh, they were invited to Episcopal Church to sing in their choir for their, I don't know, community day. And one of the songs that the Episcopal Church wanted them to sing was a song, of course, everybody knows the Lord's Prayer, but the, the version that they wanted was the version that calls God a she. It is a great arrangement. I heard it in the 90s when What's his name arranged it? What's his name, y'all? Uh, don't worry, be happy. What's his name? He sings, he does a cappella. Yeah. Here's a little song I wrote. Might want to hear it. No, from no, don't worry. Well, he uh, he released a project with that song on it called the, the The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And she makes me to lie down in green pastures. She restores my soul and yada, yada, yada. And his explanation was that he was actually singing it in honor of his grandmama, I think it was, mother or grandmother or someone. And But you can't explain that. If you don't explain it in the lyrics, then people just automatically, you know, assume that you're calling God a she. The Episcopal Church adopted the song. They loved it. Why? Because it was perfect for what they stand for right now. Thank you, Isaac Cox, uh, Bobby McFerrin. It was perfect. So my choir decided, we, we don't want no part of this. We don't care what his intention was. We're not going to be in public calling God a she. Yeah. They said, we ain't conforming to this. So I believe that not only men would love that polygamy idea, but women would love it too. Not all women. There will be more men who love it than women. There are a lot of women who will refuse it because when you talk to any, any type of... Uh, polygamy type group like the Mormons if you, listen, if you listen to what they say, many of those arrangements are very difficult to upheld and a lot of jealousy happens and fights happen and divisions and all kind of things because it's usually the woman that gets to have a problem with it even though they feel that it is the culture of their religion or their cult they still feel that it, it's difficult. I don't know how Solomon did that with 700 wives and well, how many did he have? 300 wives and 700 concubines. But that was their culture then. But today, polygamy is very difficult. It's difficult because, number one, it's expensive. A lot of men can't afford it. <laughs> and number two, a lot of women get jealous because of it. And so cheating is already hard enough, you know, for a man to commit some type of an adulterous act on a woman. That's hard enough. But then to enter into an agreement called polygamy, you know how difficult that is if they made that law and, and men would try try it, it would be harder on women. And that's why uh, God changed the, the aspect of uh, divorce in the scriptures. If you look very closely, um, they were divorcing the women for whatever reason, for any kind of reason. She, he didn't, she had bad breath or she didn't have sex with him on the ceiling. It's just, just really stupid stuff. So they were, they were presenting their women with writs of divorce. Jesus came on the scene and says, hold up. That was not the way it was in the beginning. Moses gave a writ of divorce, and that writ protected not the man, but it protected the women, and it shocked them. So he said, you can't do this. You can't just play with women like they're a piece of meat. 
because I made you over, put you over a woman. As God, then as Christ, then as man, then as woman. You can't just treat her any kind of way because I put that pecking order in place. I still have to protect her because she was made in my image. So you don't just divorce a woman because you feel like it. He said, it wasn't like that in the beginning. Ooh, I don't think any of y'all getting this. So men still think that they're superior over women to the point where they're just saying and doing whatever they want to and have a harem of women and, and all these things because they feel that God has made him superior over a woman. But I have no right over a woman that is not mine. The husband is over the wife. Ooh, we're not teaching that in church. So we think that the man is over all the women. There's a problem. Ooh we. So what happens is you, you, the wives who are at church got unsaved husbands at home. And the wives are listening to their pastors, but they're not listening to their husbands because he ain't saved. So the husband gets upset and he comes up to the church and shoot the pastor. How'd I go here? Some brothers will, will cheat willingly, but let the female cheat. Yep, I know. Uh, Isaiah 4 and 1, what are you saying, Agape? In that day, seven women will take hold of uh, one man and say, we will eat our own food and provide our own clothes. Only let us be called by your name. Ooh, take away our disgrace. See, Agape. Now, I need to properly interpret that for those of you who still say today that there's seven women to one man. It is not. It is not. In marriage, our bodies aren't our own. Veronica, that's right. Um, the scripture there, Isaiah 4 and 1, in, in many cases, I don't want to turn this into Bible study because I'm, I'm doing romance in the park and it's getting nasty. Uh, in, in scripture, a lot of times, the Bible uses... Uh, um, numbers like number seven, especially if y'all call it God's perfect number, the number seven uh, don't always mean that it, it is it is abs it is uh, specifically seven things that happen. It doesn't. A lot of times the Bible uses the number seven as a general term. For instance, a just man falls seven times. Well, a just man don't necessarily fall seven times. So if he falls six times, is he not just? He got to fall seven times. Now he just. What if he falls eight times? Is he not just again? So seven is used as just a general idea that a man falls a lot of times. Okay. Now, there are... Uh, there are there are fifty percent, almost fifty percent men on the earth, as there are fifty percent women on the earth. I think it's, I think the number is like forty nine percent men or forty nine percent women, and the other uh, it might be forty eight, forty seven, something like that. But they're almost half and half. All right. So just as many men are born on the earth as women are. And you can Google it right now. Look at the population of men and women, and you'll see that it's almost half and half. Okay. So what's pretty much the scripture is pretty much saying that all these women are going to jump on this one guy because there might be a prominence in this guy. He's available. He he has assets and he has this and so let I just want to take on your name. Okay, that's what's pretty much that's pretty much what the scripture is saying. Uh, we have to properly exegete it, use hermeneutics and to get to this answer. Nevertheless, though, there are so many women, because I believe this is the last day, that are, they are so, and I'm, again, I'm going with your term, Melinda, I think you mentioned, they are so longing for a man that that longing turns into desperation, and then desperation turns into action, and it causes a woman to go into her portal, her, her delusion, her vortex where he can do whatever he want to, say whatever he want to. He can have 10 women on the side. It does not matter. She still wants him because she feels it becomes a competition now and she's going to be the last one standing. That is the mentality of a lot of women today. I don't care if they're in church or in a club. Same pig. Lipstick. Still a pig. Okay? That is it. I'm trying to tell you, we see this a lot. Now, what is the resolve? Uh, the sisterhood. I've got to talk to the sisters. Y'all need meetings. Y'all need conferences. 
Y'all need retreats. Y'all need uh, teleconferences. Y'all need to take your daughters out on walks. You need to find a way to tell, let them know that, you know what? It, it, I know about loneliness. It's hard. I want a man too. I deserve one. I've been patient. Mm-hmm. And don't tell her that there's a shortage of men. There ain't a shortage of men. It's just that, as far as bodies on the earth, it's just that the availability, though, seems like there's a shortage because we look at the statistics of how many men are in jail. And we think that because the statistics say this many thousands are in jail, you look at it as, well, we ain't got that many men left. They're all in jail. No, baby. No, boo-boo. There are more men out of jail than they are in jail. So you can't use jail as an excuse. Number two, you say a lot of these men are gay. Yes, a lot of them are. Guess what? There are a lot of dykes. There are a lot of lesbians out there as well. So where don't we have a shortage too? Yes, we do. And this percentage of men that are gay is a small percentage still, even though it seems like they are huge, uh, millions of them. No, that is not true. Okay? Number three, there, there, are, there are thousands of black boys being born every day, like there are thousands of black little girls being born every day. All right? So the availability may seem short for you because you're looking at the statistics of the jail. You're looking at the statistics of gay men. Then you're looking at the statistics of men who are already married, okay? So, and you think, that is the consensus of all black men. That's it. We ain't got but a few men left. No, that's not true. And stop um, allowing people to, to put that in your head, okay? You got to start letting people put that in your head. You don't know how many available men are out there. But every time you turn around, you seeing women getting married to heterosexual men. Every time you turn around, your friends are getting married. And you're like, how is she getting married? I've been waiting all these years. She find this man and now she's married. Y'all are in Facebook uh, single groups. And these people are getting married. I'm a part of about five, six Facebook single groups. And every time I turn around, somebody is deleting themselves out the paces. All right, I got to go, y'all. Me and so-and-so hooked up and got married. So how is there a shortage of all these women are marrying all of a sudden? It's because where you are, there are places that you don't go. What's your routine? You wake up in the morning, you head to work, the same route to work on your job is probably 95% women. The, the two, three, four men that are on the job, they might be married or they just, you, they just not your type. And then you leave the job and where do you go? Uh, you, you, you go, you're on your way home or you go to church, okay? Wherever you are, ain't no men around you. You're not in places. You don't, you don't go out. I'm, I'm talking about you. You don't go to cultural situations, all right? You, you don't. You don't go to the, the theater. I ain't talking about no little dark, dank movie theater with the popcorn, sticky floors. I ain't talking about that. You don't go to cultural things. You don't go to art galleries, okay? You don't. You don't go to 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 the park. Okay? You don't. You don't go. And I'm not talking so much talking about alone. I'm talking about even with your sisterhood. You don't go to these cultural places where these men are. These men of prominence. These men who are looking for women. They're hanging out at the Desabo Museum. They they, they might be at the Art Institute downtown. <clears throat> they might be at the, one of these fests. They might be at a, an upscale restaurant, you know, looking at you from across the room. You never know. Don't just think because he's sitting there by himself, he's some pimp, or he's some guy who's just going to pick up women. That, you can't just keep thinking about that. All men are not like that. So there are places that you refuse to go because some of y'all are so holy, you don't want to go to those places because you've been taught. Don't go to those places because uh, y'all always quoting Psalms chapter 1 or 2 sitting in the seat of the scornful and all that stuff. Man, please, most most of the churches that y'all attend is the seat of the scornful. You sitting on the bench with somebody who... Yeah, all right, let me stop. <laughs> so, you know, so y'all using these poor, horrible excuses, and now you're 60, 65 years old, talking about something, uh, woe is me, I'm so lonely for a man, ain't no men out there. Well, because all you go is to in your house or to your job and then to church, and that's it. Men don't never find you because you ain't in the places where they are. Ain't no men at your church. You already know ain't no men at your church. And the, men, the, the ones out there ain't available. They married or they gay. Okay? So that's all the place you hang out. You trying to find a man in your church when there's thousands of churches out there. <laughs> okay. Change the mindset. I'm trying to tell y'all, man, y'all crazy. <laughs> they don't say what, uh, they don't say anything when you are here, Gopi says, mm, I'm trying to, well, you know, man, y'all keep living. I, I try to empower my sisters in my, in my group 
on Facebook. Yeah, that's good. The birthing place. The process. Yes, Veronica. That's good. Hey, hey, Charlie Milam. Blessings to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come on. Y'all preaching here. <laughs> y'all preaching. What uh, sounds... What does it say? Some church brothers are player players. Veronica, yes. You see? But Veronica, did you hear what I just said, though? Did you hear anything I said? We already know that a lot of the brother player players are everywhere you go. I'm walking around here in Surrisville, out here in the park. There's some women that are probably looking at me outside the window saying, is he either crazy talking to his, to his hand or he looking for some woman? He, we're going to call the police on him because he's walking around in a circle. He might be a player player from the Himalaya too. <laughs> Until you, you get to know a man and you realize, oh, you know what? You know, there's a lot of people who thought I was one thing until they start talking to me. And they realize, you're not the guy I heard so-and-so say about you. You're not that guy... These group of people said about you. you know, I said, I know I ain't that guy. They've come to a conclusion who I am by watching my YouTube videos, my Facebook lives, my social media posts. Uh, maybe I was at a party and they, they saw me acting crazy because I'm the life of the party. And they just assumed that's the real Sir Walter. Well, some of that is me. But my close friends, a couple of them are right here, know that when you in my presence, in many cases, I don't say much. I spend 90 to 95 percent of my entire life alone. I'm a, I am a loner. Notice, when y'all see me do Facebook Lives, I'm usually by myself, unless I'm with Elder Rodney Jones on Thursday for Bible study. Other than that, I'm in my office, right? I'm out here by myself. Charlie Milam came out here maybe two times to walk with me around the park. I do stuff by myself. And I don't have a problem with it. I've always been a loner. Nine, there's nine people in my family. And seven boys, back to back. Seven boys, back to back. And then two girls were born later on in the late 70s. So, I don't know. The only woman that I know to be around was my mama. Until my little sisters were born. And by that time, I was up in teenage years. Okay, but I'm a middle child. I'm used to being alone. I'm used to acting or feeling like the family didn't really care about me because I was poof, an absentee in the midst of a, a thousand people. I felt like I ain't nobody noticing me. That was me. In many cases, that still is me. So what do I do? I retreat. I fill out an application to go to college. They, got, they accepted me. I didn't want to go to a college in Illinois. Where did I go? I went 2,000 miles away, uh, Florida, Daytona Beach. I wanted to get away. I wanted to go to places where nobody knew me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I wanted to join a church where nobody knew me. I walked the park, walked the lakefront by myself. I don't go with nobody. I'm in my 50s. Why is that? I've always been that way. You need to read that book called Birth Order by Kevin Lehman. It's, it's a great book. I met him. He signed a copy. Uh, he studied psychology for, I don't know, 37 years. And he read me like a book. He said, you a middle child, ain't you? I said, how did you know that? He says, man, I've been in this game a long time. He said, you a middle child. He said, you are the most difficult one for me to treat. That's what he told me. You are the most difficult. He says, I can treat people who are the only child. I can treat people who are the oldest child. I could treat people who are the baby child, but those middle children, you're difficult. I said, I know. My family said the same thing. So, when I turn this off, don't nobody come to my house, and I don't invite them over either. Some people think that men who are single like me got women coming in and out of house, in and out of house. Sometimes I meet women, either at church or restaurants or what have you and we talk and they say yeah you you're a singer you you must have a lot of women coming in and out i said why do y'all always think that men like me got women coming in and out of my house i said the average woman that i know don't even know where i live they know the vicinity where i live but they ain't never seen my front porch and they never will why i prefer it that way i don't want no drive-bys no and not because i'm trying to hire some i just don't want that kind of life I like my seclusion. 
And it's not a boring life. I enjoy being alone. I just enjoy it. Now, if I decide that it's time for me to get married, then my psyche going to change. You best believe that. Then I know I have to share my life with this woman. And that will change and have to change immediately. And she's got to help me with that. Now, here goes my transparency here. You see, how do you help a man not to abandon? Well, men, especially my age, don't like silly women, number one. <laughs> we don't like women who... Uh, we could put up with women who play the dumb role because it's, some of, sometimes it's cute. But sometimes it's too much. Just too much. All right? So we don't like the complaining woman, the nagging woman, the stuff that you always hear from men. You nag. You, you're just old balls and chain. That's obvious. We don't like that. But... We could put up with that when the woman shows other types of boundaries and balances. And what are those balances? She supports him. She lifts him up. She tells him, I appreciate you. She tells him, I'm proud of you. She, she checks up on him to make sure he's okay. These things that mothers do. And you're all like, I ain't trying to be his mother. Uh, there in here lies the problem because what the woman feels that I ain't trying to be his mama when when he discovered you and decided to pull you in his lair he actually was looking for his mama oh man I'm telling y'all I got to write that book and I'm not talking about this Oedipus complex kind of stuff no I don't think y'all get this why do you think I treat my daughter the way I do with, with I show chivalry Okay, why do you think I'm always loving on my daughter? I'm, I was with her today. The first thing I did was embrace her. When I when I left her, I said, "I love you, baby." Okay, I played in her hair. I talked about what she's doing in life, all these things. Because why? Because the man who comes around my daughter, my daughter is going to automatically compare him to her father. And y'all. Support that, don't you, women? Right. So if you support that, but then when a man does it, he's looking for his mama, you reject it. So you say, Alice don't live here no more. Y'all remember that show? Alice don't live here no more. I ain't your mama. Clean up after yourself. Cook for yourself. I ain't your mama. And when a man hears that, he, he bucks against that. Because then he says, but that's who I found when I found you. I found the traits of my mama. That's who I wanted. Now you're telling me you're not my mama. Psychological. See, I get the defense of the women saying, I ain't cleaning up after your mama. I get that because men should have some responsibilities at home. He should cook and clean like you do. Whether both of y'all working or both of y'all not working, he still should do that. But he's still looking for his mama. Why? Because there is a little boy in all men. And ladies, let me help you. I see this all the time. If you still are rejecting the, the, the theology of the little boy in all men, you will never be happy in your relationship. Never. Because he's looking for you to present to him that new toy. He's sick in his body and he's looking for you to kiss his boo-boo. He wants you to talk to him sometimes like the little boy. The little boy is always there. When he's upset, when he's happy, when he's sad, the little boy is always lying dormant in him and you are the one who can tap into that boyhood. So he wants his mama. His mama, still today, I don't care if this man is 50, 55, he still goes over to his mama house and his mama still treat him like a little boy. And he responds to it. Don't he? Yes, he does. Oh, man. I'm, I, don't, I don't understand. So, how do you get him from uh, not abandoning you? Number one, sometimes abandonment is good because that fool may not be the right man for you anyway. He should have hit the road, Jack, and never came back no more. So I don't know why you're being so desperate to keep this man around knowing that he really not even right for you. So let him abandon you and get the heck up out of town. All right. Then there's that man who is 
caught between a rock and a hot place because he's he's confused, he's sad, he's hurting, uh, he, he don't know what to do. He might be hurting spiritually, mentally, psychologically, uh, physically, all kind of stuff. And you might be the one that God sent to him to help him heal. You might be that one. He could be preparing you for his wife. You could be that one, but you're rejecting him because you don't know how to interpret this man's pain. So you need to tap into his mind, find out what's going on. Be his psychologist, be his doctor, be his mentor, be his teacher, be his mother. And if you marry the man, be his sex toy. And y'all like, that's too much work. Well, you want a man, right? You know he complex, right? Guess what? You just as complex as he is. Remember I mentioned earlier in the, the show, I said that fountain I just drunk out of, men are like fountains and women are like whales. Well, when I do a show tomorrow maybe about the aspect of women, I'll tell you how complex women are. We are 50-50. Y'all just as jacked up as we are. We got to do just as much work as you do. I drank. That's a man. That's a man. Look at him. He always peeing. Wait a minute. Did I say pee and then I then I, I drunk? Hmm. Okay. It, it can can we erase that from Facebook Live? Okay. Anyway, that that's a woman. That's a man. That water went down there in the bottom. It's going down into the women's lair. Oh, y'all typing. I ain't read nothing. Okay. Let me read this and shut this down. Uh, tell the truth. Men need a woman that is balanced in, in areas. Yep. Healthy standards and boundaries along with strong self-esteem. Veronica says, Charlie said that earlier when uh, men seek for the uh, attributes of their mother. Veronica is saying, Darlene Dorch says, hey, Sir Walter. No, he's safe for real and a gentleman. All right, Darlene Dorch. Hey, hey, hey. So good to see you here. Um, a hand... A hands-on mother who is connected will be a brother's first example of who and what. Ooh, that's good. Uh, the mother says uh, that in Proverbs 31. Ooh, agape. I want to go there so bad. Uh, uh, Proverbs 31. Uh, who can find a virtuous woman? Is several women, not just one. Oh, man. This is where y'all going to be upset with me. Let me read Dunlap, where he says, men need consist, uh, consistent and constant words of appreciation and come on, uplift. See, Cheryl, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you are here. Uh, who else? Let me read somebody else's comments, because some of y'all are saying <laughs> it, is, it is possible that God will send a man that's in the process of divorce. Wait, is it possible that God will send a man that's in the process of a divorce? No. No. I do not believe that Melinda Reed, Melinda Reed, I do not emphatically believe that God will send a man who is still legally married to you. I do not believe it. The only time he did that was he was trying to teach Israel a lesson with Gomer. Uh, and he told the, the prophet, who was it? Who, who was it? Uh, he told him, Go out there and get that prostitute, right? Marry her. And she kept going out there and, and being a harlot. And God said, go back out there and get her. Because I'm trying to teach Israel that that's what y'all are doing to me. Other than that, God will never send you, ladies, a man that's legally married. No. Not happening. Um, the... Um, now, men use men and women you like to use excuses that God must have done this. He he's gonna settle this thing with them, you know, as this as they fix this stuff. And then then then, uh, and I know people who got married after a divorce. They were dating each other and they were still legally married, and then they divorced and then they got married and they said, "See, God worked it out." Yeah, He worked out a mess that y'all put yourself in. It's a it's actually dangerous to do that. Because God is not the author of confusion. Uh, no, he no no. If he's married, he's married. He is not dating material. God is not yes schizophrenic. <laughs> Veronica, that's pretty good. Thank you, Vanessa Craft, Hosea, uh, Melinda, Hosea, and uh, and Gomer. That's one time God did that. Let me let me address the whole thing with the Proverbs 31 woman as I close this down. This is an hour and nine minutes. Um, 
uh, uh, Stephen Perry uses uh, Titus. That's good. Uh, this opens the door for the uh, rebound clause. Yep, you'll become his next enabler. There you go. That's it. I don't think y'all understand how this this uh, domino effects that can happen. It's it's unhealthy. This domino because you are the new girl who's working on uh, who is on her way to be the old girl. Mm -hmm. Get that? You the new girl who's on her way to be the old girl. God will not confuse you like that. There's too many men out there that are available and waiting, and they are kings. They are priests right now sitting in an empty throne waiting to conquer uh, uh, this kingdom and bring you into his, uh, his castle and shower you with love and protection and security. He's waiting, but you're messing around with some dude that is still legally attached to a woman and in God's eyes still attached why would God do something like that why would he do that uh, the Proverbs 31 woman was a story told by a king who's a Limic is that his name Lemuel it was told to him by his mother I believe it was and talked about this virtuous woman and this woman is a diverse woman Meaning, she's not necessarily one woman. Remember when I told you all about the, the number seven? And God uses seven a lot. He's not necessarily talking about seven specific times something's going to happen. Proverbs 31 is several women. This woman does this. Then it says, in this, but in this scenario, without adding it in the scriptures, but in this scenario, this woman uh, goes after this. Mm-hmm. Yes, not just the woman in Proverbs, but the king, the meal. Yes. Um, and then this woman, her husband, uh, she, her husband loves her. Okay, now, so the, uh, what we have done, though, unfortunately was, if Proverbs 31 woman is one woman, then this woman is married. But a lot of you out there are a Proverbs 31 woman. Because if we made this woman exclusively one woman who was married, then many of you can't qualify to be a Proverbs 31 woman because many of you are single mothers. Some of you are single mothers but never even been married. So can a Proverbs 31 apply to you? Absolutely. Notice later on when it talks about her husband. She loves her husband. And then it talks about towards the end that her husband uh, is well known in the gates. Her name is praised by the husband. But leading up to that, this woman is doing a lot of things in the home and outside of the home and even in the snow. And she gathers up purple. Apparently, this woman is, is savvy. She's smart. Uh, and and sh I believe she's middle class. She know how to make that money. Because when, whenever, the, especially whenever the, the Bible talks about purple, you know how expensive it was to even own purple? To make purple is, it, anyway... Who was that? What's the woman? Who, who was the woman in the New Testament? The maker of the... Let's start with the L. Uh, reality, after divorce, the there needs to be a period of reformation. Love it. Healing and, rec, and reconnecting with your self-worth. Veronica, that's tight. Who wants someone else's uh, trash that yet stinks? He's attached already. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call him trash, but <laughs> I get your analogy. Uh, there hasn't been a healing process and more than likely seeking enabler or help. Yes. Yeah. Who wants that? I was there. That was me. I was in the middle. I was in the middle of a divorce process proceeding. And I was dating. Me, Sir Walter. And I, like the rest of a lot of these people, was coming up with all kind of excuses why I was doing it. Yes. Because when you get caught up in that kind of thing where your heart is reaching out to something, you start making excuses for your heart. Thank you, Natasha Miles. Lydia, the woman of purple. Uh, so I started making up excuses. Mm-hmm. I know Evelyn Nichols. It was Lydia. N N Natasha got it. Um, uh, because my heart was involved, I started saying, well, apparently God must be in the details because uh, my, my heart uh, is 
pulling towards this woman. So I started making excuses. Well, God is going to d dissolve this relationship, this marriage, and so, and so I, I could start in the fresh with this woman. And it was silliness. And that's what causes many of us to, to that's why we use the word a lot, uh, cognitive dissonance. We use excuses. We use excuses for Donald Trump. We use excuses for, for uh, Snoop Dogg. We use excuses for Carlton Pearson and this inclusion thing. We use excuses for allowing gays to, pastors to marry and have the first man and, and lesbians to have a first woman. And all. We use excuses for all this because our hearts got involved. And somebody spoke and said, God know my heart. God had an answer for that. He says, yeah, I know your heart is wicked. He said, who can know it? Your heart is evil. Of course I know your heart. So your heart get in the way, and then you start coming up with clever ways of justifying how you feel, and your emotion have... <laughs> I say it a lot, so I, I have to pause because I, I find myself repeating myself. Your emotion have an expiration date. Tick, tick, tick is done. Your crying don't reach God. Your emotion and your crying don't move God. Not at all. It don't. When I hear women crying over something that I think makes no sense, I ignore it. When she get through with all her motion and boo boo, and I says, "Okay, you done? All right, then what do you want from me?" That's the way God is. He said, "You, oh, you're crying. Away with you." He say, "What moves me? Number one is your obedience. Yeah, because the highest praise is not hallelujah. No, the highest praise. Anybody say hallelujah? They got hallelujah in secular songs. That ain't the highest praise." Your obedience is. That's the highest praise. Your action towards God. Number two, without faith, it is impossible to do what? Please the Lord. Your tears, they don't mean nothing to God. It's your faith. Now, if your faith produces tears, then he says, I'll take your tears and put it in the bottle and store it. Because you could, and I'm going to revert back to it because I said, you know what? Yeah, let's see. October the 1st, 2017, I'm getting ready to see because she stored up treasures ooh, through her tears because her faith operated her tears. Feelings of flesh, Isaac says. Isaac Cox, this is So Was Jones show, man. You can't be preaching on my show. We run out of money. We ain't got no more offering. They wrote an offering for me, not Isaac Cox, Esquire. Okay? Now, you got a PayPal account. Put it up here so that we can give you 10% of them. <laughs> Isaac, I love you, man. The, the, that crying act is similar to an addict needing their next high. Will do and say something. Yep, and able. Yep, come on. If your emotion goes against the spirit of God or goes against scripture, it is all uh, your tears and it, it moves God to nothing. <laughs> He's not moved by it. Because he know when you get through wiping your tears, you're going to rob the bank. Yeah. So I'm not moved by nobody's tears, not even my own children. Not moved by it. Men have been manipulating what they call it, crocodile tears. Is that what they call it, y'all? Men and women have been using crocodile tears for hundreds of years, and God is not moved by that. Okay? So as I close this down, because I must be cold because I didn't I didn't close about six times already. Alright? Uh, what is the moral of the story here? Because we're starting back our romance in the park since it's warm out now. Number one, um, uh, there are men who like you for your outward appearance. God says that's, the what, that's what men do. We look on the outward appearance, but he says, but I look on the heart. Can a man see your heart, though? Uh, he probably can if he's tapped into the Spirit of God. He can have the spirit of uh, the gift of um, discerning of spirits where he can tell. All right? So, when a man, uh, you can tell that a man is a, attached to your heart because I believe what comes from the heart reaches the heart. 
you can tell if a man wants you for your heart and he, and and for your brain. It's called sapiosexual. Sapiosexual is one of the most rewarding. Uh, it's like a neurotransmitter in the brain. The dopamine is activated and serotonin is activated. Ooh wee! And so, uh, when a man is attracted to your intelligence, sapio, sapio, sexual, okay, then he's lured in by this woman, and you probably have a better opportunity of keeping an, a long-lasting relationship with that man than you do with the man when you wear these tight jeans and uh, these sexy boots and uh, uh, fish necks, uh, uh, stockings, uh, pantyhose, and and um, uh, you having a weavathon, okay, and all, all the outward stuff and allowing your the cleavage to show. Those kind of men you attract, those are bugs. Yeah, those are bugs. And bugs, just, they fly around. They, they fly around doo-doo and, you know, and, and light and all that stuff and all, all kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, so that just attracts this man's uh, libido. It, 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 it gets his, uh, that... Um, he gets that testosterone worked up, okay? Eh, that man may not be around that long. But if you could talk to a man from your heart and watch how he operates. And then if y'all decide to go out on a date and then y'all are walking and he's talking to you about that which is intellect, intellectual. He may talk about his love for mankind, personhood, his love for God, his love for family. Okay, uh, if he reaches over and, and grab your hand subtly and he's walking with you, because men don't hold hands. Men don't like to do that. But if you find a man who does that in public, just reach out and just grab your hand and he's, or he's, he's protecting you in traffic and things like that, he may, not all men, because some men are players, they're good at that, but he may be attracted to your heart. That man may not be the one who's getting ready to abandon you nor your children, okay? Because some of you uh, single ladies out there have children, and you watch this man, how he interacts around your kids. Ah, oh, man. See, when I was dating years ago, um, gosh, how many years ago was it? I'm not saying that I'm not dating now. I'm just saying when I was dating years ago, <laughs> Okay. Y'all, some of y'all, when I said this, some of y'all said, oh, he don't want to date. Uh, how y'all know I ain't dating now? Hmm? How y'all know I ain't dating now? Okay. But when I was dating years ago, I was dating a woman that had a couple kids. And when I would come over to the house, uh, my attraction were to those kids. And it got to the point where the mama started getting jealous of my relationship with the children. Because as soon as I walked in the house, the kids were high. Because they knew that game time was getting ready to play. I was the biggest kid in that house, and they would hide. Walter's here, and they would hide in the closet. And then they would jump out and jump on my back and roll on the ground. And I spent 80% of my time at the house with the kids. And she's like, are we dating? <laughs> you come over to date my kids. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to kiss up to your kids to the wind. You already got you, but I like kids. And I don't care what age they are. I love the kids. And I really like your kids. Okay? Watch him the way... If he coming over there and he tell, he always trying to tell you, can the kids go to bed? Can the kids go over to babysitter? It, it, does your daughter got... got does she go to work? She should... You know, and he always want to come over and spend that time only with you? Something's wrong. That's a problem. I don't care how old your children are. He should want to be around your children. He should want it. Some brothers know how to play the part. However, his heart will be far from truth. Yes. Veronica, you just typing and you just... You, you, this must be a subject you are familiar with. When you date with kids, it's a package deal. Yep, no, no separation. This is why when dating with kids, there must be a level of understanding, maturity, and respect. That's right. Watch them around those kids. And be careful because there are a lot of men that are all very, they're very sexual as well. And if you have a daughter that has been formed in her body, uh, he, will, he, 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 he may not touch her. He may not be a pedophile, but he may have a struggle 
sexually. You may have a struggle with lust. And that lust could manifest itself if you're not careful. So watch him. Test him. Do all you can. Watch us when your daughter's around. Watch him. And watch how he looks at her. I'm trying to tell y'all. I get women all the time who inbox me, who call me, says, this man that I'm dating right now looks at my daughter in a very sexual way. I'm telling y'all, I have to tell y'all everything that I can think of to protect you because I love y'all. Yes, I do. I've never had that issue, Daphne says. Uh, this is the pertinent into in info, but I must go. All right, good night to you, Melinda Reed. We'll be here for another two hours. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm got, I got to shut this down, too, because it's hard out here. <laughs> this is my topic, sir. Yep. That's good stuff. Veronica, then you need to share this. All right? Stop playing with me. Okay? Again, um, don't have to be formed. Um, again, watch him. Watch how yet. Now, I have adopted daughters. I have I adopted them because their fathers are not really in their life. So I've adopted them, and I shower them with love and compassion like I do my own daughter, but I do it within reason. See, I could touch my daughter in all, you know, in, in fatherly ways because that's my daughter. She came out of my lungs, loins. But I can't really be that affectionate towards some of the daughters that I have adopted and because their mothers are single mothers. And they're, they're just, there are just boundaries that I can't do. As much as I want to uh, show them the chivalry of a man, I can't. So I have to be careful. Uh, even at my church, there are a lot of young ladies, teenage girls, who after service, as soon as they raise their hand and dismiss service, they run up to the pulpit to me. They surround me. They embrace me. They hug me. And I literally have to be careful to keep some of them at bay uh, because I don't know what their parents thinking. I don't know what the other people are there thinking. But it, at my church, it got to the point where people are kind of used to the, those, those young ladies coming to me because what they see in me is a father figure. Um, many of them will call me Uncle Walter. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the term that many young people are using today. Everybody's uncle or auntie, okay? So they call me Uncle Walter, but they treat me, some of them believe, they actually believe that I am literally their uncle. They just believe that. <laughs> okay? So I embrace them. I might give them some money. I've even taken a couple of them out on, on, on dates. I have a brother and a sister in the, in the Lord at the church who allow me to take, they, they have two daughters, and I take two, two daughters out on, on dates. And we go out to eat or we go to the movies and what have you, and they, 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 they're very close to their father, so they already have a very great father. But then the father allowed them to see other good men in the church who's not trying to rub up on them, you know, in a bad way. So they allowed me to take them out on dates. And I love that. And that is something that is missing today. It's missing. It's unfortunate, but, but that is, it's, it's gone. You just don't know. That's why my parents didn't allow us to sleep in anybody's house back in the 70s. And we couldn't sleep at anybody's house because molestations were happening at the neighbor's house. You just didn't do it. Uh, why, 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 wait, this is why your children ought not meet or encounter everyone you're interested in. That's true. That is so true. Um, uh, good night, Agape. Um, you're right. Don't, don't, don't introduce your, your children to just all, to all these men in your lives. <laughs> why you got all these men in your lives, I don't know. But don't just right away introduce your kids to these men because that man might be a temporary fad of yours. And he, he in there, he done robbed your kids' hearts, and now he's gone. And the kids are wondering, where's, where's uh, Bojangles? And then another man comes over and you introduce him early in life. Where's George? You see what I'm saying what's happening? And what happens? You're training and raising that child to do the same thing when they get older. All right. I think I'm done. If you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and uh, hit me in the comment box. If you got any more topics for the Sir Walter Jones show out here in the park, go ahead and um, uh, hit me with some ideas for romance in the park. Last year, we talked about a whole lot of racy stuff, all right? A lot of it had to do with sex. <laughs> it did. Yeah, a lot to do with sex. Uh, but a lot of it had to do with the, psycholo the psychology 
of relationships and it was important and again I had a lot of people who tell me thank you this is helping me there are people at my church who um, are married today and their husbands don't know how to do what he did when they first got married or when they were dating when they, they stopped because uh, too many married couples are not having sex they're not they're not kissing they're not they don't hold hands and I'm not I'm not talking about outside public affection well I really don't need to see all that but they don't do it not even in private they don't do it and a lot of the wives uh, will catch me in the church parking lot and say I saw your show last night thank you I said ooh you got to whisper to me yeah I don't want him to know I was watching it he was at work or he was sleeping, I was in the office watching your show. And I used that tactic you told me, and it worked. It may be temporary, but I got some. <laughs> I said, wow. Okay, well, thank you. Send, send me an offering. <laughs> PayPal.me forward slash Sir Walter is my PayPal account. Uh, bless the man of God. <laughs> uh, when your children experience all your dating. Okay, I read that already. Okay. All right, so listen, there's some people here that do wonderful podcasts, and I think I think they're brilliant. Cedric Ford is one of them. I think I see him here. Other than Agape, who does wonderful podcasts, uh, and Veronica does uh, podcasts. I'm, I'm waiting to see hers. I haven't watched hers yet. Uh, Cheryl Dunlap is another one who, uh, who's been with me a long time on these shows, and the things that she's had to say about relationships have been absolutely stunning, and it has blessed me as well as others. Y'all go to their sites. Why don't you hit them with Facebook uh, friend requests, uh, and then go on there and look at their, their videos, okay? Cedric does a lot of his videos during the day in his car. I think it's beautiful, uh, I, because everybody have that thing that they do. If you see Cedric coming on, he gonna be in his car. That's his office. And it, I think it's I think it's great. I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. It just it just I just feel so enclosed and so so I go outside or I go or I'm more comfortable in my office. But he does that, and and the people that comes on there, he's he's helping them. And sometimes they they disagree. Sometimes I disagree because <laughs> he disagrees with me. But oh my gosh, we learn so much from each other because iron sharpens iron. You know, visit these people's uh, Facebook lives. And um, check them out uh, because they talk about very controversial things that even I won't talk about. Yeah, friends who like the birthing place. Uh, Veronica's, uh, hers is friends who like the birthing place, the process. That's hers. For those of you who are on YouTube, you go to Facebook and type in Veronica uh, McNeary is her name. Her, her Facebook page i think it's friends who like the birthing place the process check it out reverend robert blake has an amazing message for women also he's on youtube robert blake all right check these people out let's promote them uh because they are talking about things um, um i keep saying that this is the last thing I, I want this to be the last thing i was at the musician's breakfast here in chicago and i sat down with uh percy Beatty. percy Beatty is a well-known Grammy Award winning brother wrote for the Thompson Community Singers all through the 80s and what have you. And uh, as I was sitting at the table with him, he said, Oh, Sir Walter, I said, Yes, sir. Uh, he said, um, I was talking, I bumped into a brother who said, Do you watch the Sir Walter Jones show? He says, Yeah, man, it's my brother. He says, um, The guy says, Yeah, but he's a, what did he call me? He's an accuser of the brethren. <laughs> so me and my brother Rodney and Larry were sitting at the table and we just started busting up laughing and Percy said yeah that, that brother called you an accuser of the brethren I said why would he call me that that's what you call Satan <laughs> he said yeah I told him I said why you say that and the brother said because he talked about stuff we shouldn't be talking about openly that's something that don't need to be talked about uh, in public and Percy says well, see, that's what the problem is with the church. Y'all don't talk about it in public. Why you think we got so much confusion in the church today? And that whole table erupted in an applause. I said, ain't that nice that he protect me like that? 
because that's why people tune in to the Sir Walter Jones show and, and the Cedric Ford show and Veronica because he and her and myself are going to at least talk about stuff that y'all are afraid to talk about in public. Your pastor won't bring it up in, in the congregation because maybe it's mixed audience. Maybe it's just too delicate to talk about, so they won't do it. So some of these pastors actually listen to my show and they'll send me a private message and say thank you because I can't talk about this to my church. And a lot of times I'm shocked to hear them say that, and then I'm not shocked. So the church is in the state that it's in right now because we don't bring up these topics. And a lot of the women, especially the women, are miserable with their husbands. The single women are miserable with their boyfriends. They're miserable in, sister, in, in singlehood. They're miserable because the church ain't talking about these things. They not talk about these matters. The world is. The church ain't. All we talk about is scripture and spiritual stuff, and we know earthly good, and we go home, and we're broke. Ain't nobody got any money. We have no investments, and, uh, and we have no sex life in our, in our marriages. None. And our children don't respect us. But we at church two, three times a week. So what is the church doing? It's keeping us suppressed and poor and miserable because we ain't talking about practical issues we don't talk about health but when somebody's sick we throw oil on them and pray for them send them home and they're still sick but we don't talk about eating habits we don't talk about investment plans we don't talk about uh, helping the poor none of that it's just tithe, offering altar call throw oil Folk get come home with oil stained clothes and got sometimes you gotta throw the clothes away because you can't clean that. <laughs> and Monday through Saturday, we're miserable. The husband is fighting with you and you throwing a kitchen utensils at him. He's cheating. The kids that don't come home, they're running away from home, and everybody's sick, and people gotta go down to the payday loan and the title loan in order to survive for the week. But you was at church all day Sunday. Talking about what? So you tune into the Walt, Sir Walter Jones show, the Cedric show, uh, the Isaac Cox show, the Veronica show, even the Natalie Miles is one of my favorite. She, uh, that girl right there, is a bad member. Shut your mouth. And they talk about practical stuff that will help you. I gotta go. Victoria Quarter, bless it to you. That's what the guys say about Reverend Robert Blakes. They say he's breaking the bro code. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I heard some of his stuff, and I, I, uh, maybe tonight when I get home, I'm gonna check him out even more. Now that you've dropped his name, avoiding those seven sins that that we get caught in: gluttony, lust, yep, yeah, greed. Yeah, come on, yeah, we talking about the world's sin, and he get on the microphone. He's about three, four hundred pounds. He can hardly breathe. Matter of fact, he got to sit down and preach because. He obese because he eat too much. And then he talk about the sin of the world. Yeah. Oh, Lord, hey. yeah. And he go home and eat all these pork stuff. <laughs> we are such big hypocrites. It's amazing. All right, y'all. Hit the uh, share button if you can. If you're on YouTube, I think I've discussed you enough. Hit the bell. Bing! Uh, get me to 5,000, please, uh, in the next... 30 days. I think y'all could do it because I only got just a few more to go and I'll have my 5,000. Bing! Go ahead and um, pray for me tomorrow. If there's time, let's talk about something out here. Mm -hmm. it's, it's summertime now, y'all. Romance in the park. Peace and love. This is the Walter Jones Show. <laughs>